This is called the cake challenge. My daughter has just put some cakes in the oven and if I don't finish this racket in under 20 minutes, I don't get one. So that's a big incentive. Let's get cracking. So I would say as well, the player who uses this particular racket, I think they play on clay, on clay, on clay quite a bit. And there's quite a bit of grit and rubbish in the grommets at the top. Um, interestingly, uh, the strings are actually broken at the top of this racket as well. So it could just be a mishit, but also there was quite a lot of grit in there as well. So I did a bit of a sweep out of the grommets before started on this. Um, always worth doing because the last thing you want to happen is to have a nice string. This is Polytour Pro. Uh, have a nice string that snaps prematurely because you have dirty grommets. So although I'm rushing through this a little bit, I'm not doing it to the detriment of the actual strings and the racket, racket themselves. So I'll still be taking some care on this racket. So again, doing all the usuals, just sticking an extra 10% on the side lanes just to make sure that it all matches up okay. So no corners cut, so to speak. Also do uh, as well as just try and blunt it there a bit just so it doesn't cut into the player's hands.
down there. Anyone that's ever strung a Babolat racket before, um, or certainly one of the more recent ones, will probably know that if they've got the grooves in the top, then you have to make sure that you uh, string the racket the right way up. And when I say the right way up, you look at the butt handle, for the, the butt of the racket first of all, and you'll see what I mean. So otherwise the cross strings, certainly the top of the racket, don't, don't match up with the outside of the frame. So you get lots of loops being missed over. Be careful not to crimp or damage the strings at all there. Like I said, even though I'm rushing this one through a bit so I can get my cakes, I'm still going to use things like the Parnell Power Bear. I just want to do everything possible just to make sure that these strings are looked after. Another good way of looking after the strings as well, certainly on the polys, I like to slide the strings across. Like that, I find that there's often less damage caused by the sharp end of the string as you're cutting across, as you might get if you finger weave. So if I'm using multis or synthetic guts or natural gut, I quite often finger weave. Uh, when I'm using polys, I quite like to slide it through like this. You've always got the really sharp part of the string coming through. But again, as long as you're consistent, so if you're doing two or three different rackets at a time, as long as you're consistent and you do the same approach for all of them, then you'll be absolutely fine. So again, I'll leave another 10% onto this because I'm going to tie it off here. So you can wait till you get to the end, but quite frankly, I'd rather just get it done right now. starting to clamp out of the way. This is actually my favourite colour bubble out. I love the neon yellow and black arrows. I know it's not everybody's favourite, but this is certainly my favourite car. I think it looks really cool. I'm really into my bright colours though, so I guess that's probably why. I think it also matches up with the Polytor Pro pretty well as well. Funny one though, because when you're trying to speed up your string, string a little bit, sometimes you actually make a few mistakes. So I'm not trying to go mega quick on this. I'm trying to rush it through, just to make sure I get the best cakes. But yeah, certainly not trying to burn the strings or anything like that. But it is 
somebody else's racket after all. So still just being careful not to twist or damage the strings as they're coming through. That's one of the reasons why I'm actually using this method. If you get batches of rackets, so if you get sort of three, four, five rackets at a time from somebody, all identical rackets with the identical string jobs, I often find to try and speed up the process is actually better sometimes. Um, so sometimes just get, getting all the strings out first and then just rattling them off one after the other. Um, because if you find a good steady rhythm, you find that consistency and tension is there as well as opposed to maybe doing a racket going away later and then coming back to it later on or spending 45 minutes on one racket because you're busy watching a film and flicking through the film and then 20 minutes on the next one um you know you want to be keeping the times fairly similar so if you spend 16 17 minutes on one you want to spend 16 17 minutes on the next one as well so don't do the mains, go off, make yourself a sandwich and then come back and do the crosses. Get it all done in one go. Not quite so important if you've got a single racket, but certainly if you've got rackets to compare it to, it does make a big difference. You know, certainly some of the better players you might break a set of strings every set or two and rely on that other racket that you've strung identically for them. So you see there, the strings just getting in the way of it. There we go. So the further, further down the string bed you get, the longer it actually takes because the mains against the crosses are getting a bit tighter. to try and do is just get things straight up as I go along as well so you don't lose too much tension so if you have the strings going in the kind of smiley face all the way like that then it means you're losing tension because you get the string longer in the string bed than it needs to be so get them as straight as you can While she's doing it, another thing you've probably seen me doing is I'm using the Diablo or Diablo, depending on where you're from in the world. On the string machine, this thing here, I'm using that on pretty much every single pull I'm doing. Um, again, it's good, good at looking after the string. And maintaining the tension as well but especially for, for looking after the string because when you're doing the crosses um, you don't want to be getting all the way down to the end and having the last bit of the string damaged and all deformed so using the Diablo just helps look after it a bit more find this as you get to the end of the mains and the crosses you might find that um, you're unable to string one ahead like I'm doing as well at the moment because you start to run out of that extra set of string to go through it but whilst I can string one ahead I will do because it just reduces a bit of the tension it's now getting a bit more difficult to use my little sliding technique just because there's less room to move Also, I'm just 
being very, very careful to get towards the bottom, not to cross any of the strings over on the outside of the frame. One thing worse than a racket that's not strung at the right tension or with the right pattern, it's a racket that's strung with loads of crosses on the loops on the outside. Just looks rubbish. My general rule of thumb is to try and go over the loop with the string coming through. So this one going over the main string on the, on the loop. As opposed to under, it's a bit easier when you're bringing the string through after the grommet. So here I'll aim to get the string coming out. Top's going to need a bit more work. myself a great deal of room to tie off there so just bring it back Off, crimp that. 